फ्रेश वॉटर इको सिस्टम फ्रेश वॉटर इको सिस्टम वेरी इन साइज फ्रॉम अ पडल टू अ पॉन्ड टू अ लार्ज लेक दे कैन बी स्टैग्नेंट वॉटर टाइप्स एज वेल एज रनिंग वॉटर टाइप्स like marine ecosystem zones are marked in freshwater ecosystem to study the environmental conditions the different zones in a lake or pond based on light penetration are littoral zone limnetic zone and profundal zone different factors like light salt content food oxygen affect the organisms and their population in different ways the shallow zone near the shore is called littoral zone in this zone the water near the shore is muddy or turbid The topmost and the warmest zone at the edge of a water body is home to snails, clams, crustaceans, fishes, amphibians and eggs and larva of dragonflies, etc. The organisms in this zone have dull and greyish bodies and well developed sight. They are fast swimmers. plants like mosses water lily valesneria hydrilla etc are found along with several types of algae high photosynthetic activity occurs in this zone the predators of the zone are tortoise snakes and ducks The limnetic zone is the open water zone at the top of the water body. This zone receives a good deal of light. It contains a variety of freshwater fish with bright shiny, greyish or silver black scales that help them to merge with the surroundings. In this zone, transparent or whitish bodied crustaceans like Daphnia cyclops small shrimps are also found there are different types of floating plants like water hyacinth wolfia pistia along with a variety of algae the photosynthetic activity is the highest both littoral and limnetic zones are photic zones the profundal zone is dimly lit and cold mostly heterotrophs are found in this region the bottom dwellers that live here are scavengers and predators for example crustaceans crabs fishes like eels and glossogobius snails turtles etc these animals feed on dead animals that settle down different kinds of bacteria that thrive here help in decomposing the dead organisms mud dead and decaying matter of plants and animal bodies make the water of this region very turbid therefore the bottom dwellers mostly rely on smell and auditory senses rather than vision to acquire their food in a lake ecosystem 
the surface layer gets heated while the deeper layers remain cool during daytime. Some organisms migrate to the deeper layers during the day and reach the surface layers at night when it cools down. The mammals that live near water can swim to catch their main food source, that is, fish. Amphibians and reptiles like toads, frogs, alligators, crocodiles, salamanders, etc. start life underwater as eggs and tadpoles and then move to the ground as adults. Insects like skaters, water beetles, mosquitoes and dragonflies swim over the surface of ponds and play a critical role in the food supply for other animals. Species like ducks, geese and swans reside in and around the lake to catch fish and other freshwater organisms. Different species have different tolerant levels of water salinity. All marine and freshwater fish maintain a constant internal salt concentration. Several marine fishes have a lower internal salt concentration than that of the water in which they swim. To compensate, the seawater fishes drink a large amount of water. Also, they excrete the salts via their kidneys and through highly specialized cells in their gills. The fresh water fishes have a higher internal salt content than the surrounding water. They tend to bloat because osmosis leads to excess of water that enters the body through the permeable membranes in the mouth and gills. The water is excreted in the form of urine. To maintain a suitable salt balance, freshwater fish needs to reabsorb salt through the kidneys and collect additional salts through salt collecting cells in their gills. The salt absorption ability determines the tolerance of a freshwater fish for saline water. When water salinity level exceeds the fish's ability to adjust their salt regulation mechanisms, the salt and fluid balance is disturbed and the fishes die. During summer, the water in the lakes evaporates. Other necessities like oxygen and nutrients decreases, which leads to the death and decomposition of organisms. In extreme cold regions, water in the lakes and ponds freezes, killing all the organisms. Some submerged plants have numerous air spaces inside the stems, leaves, roots that aid in gaseous exchange and buoyancy. Leaf bases of water hyacinth have air-filled structures to keep them floating. The leaves of water lilies are flat and have an oily surface with stomata present on the upper surface of the leaf. Hydrilla, a partially submerged plant, has no stomata. It has thin leaves and the stems are highly flexible. The main adaptations that give hydrilla an advantage over other native plants are it can grow at low light intensities. It is better at absorbing carbon dioxide dissolved in water. It is able to store nutrient for later use. It can tolerate a wide range of water quality conditions.